Offs after Siobhan returned it. And that will hit the rafter. And I'm trying to remember what the rule is. The ball Structure is outside the playing surface. The ball will be placed at the 20-yard line, first down, Amarillo Venom. Really, really love it. We have the referee's mic, which I'm forgetting about, but he uh, does a good job of explaining exactly what will happen after that ball hits the rafters here at the Civic Center. I'm almost curious if, and you know, I'm, I'm always the curious guy, thinking if you try to... No. <laughs> <laughs> if you try to avoid the Raptors in that situation to try to go for the Uno, you just try to kick it right through. As long as it doesn't hit, which the referees have to probably be pretty mindful of, will it still count if you can somehow split it through the openings in the Raptors? I would think it would count. One of the things that can come into play, kind of like Tropicana Field in Tampa Bay. Is yeah, reminds me there of. you go. Dallas back in at running back. Cole will look to put it up, and he does. And it's incomplete on the far side of the field. Rodney Pierre had it and then didn't have it well mike i'm running out of suggestions i, I feel <laughs> like uh, you know they, they're trying everything right now trying to shift to the run trying to deep pass and here again just looking for that quick completion a little hitch perfect wide open and just a, a rough drop there for the venom and again this offense just running into some big struggles and having some issues just making some simple plays just got to settle down and get back to your game. And so far, the Venom struggling at doing that. Cole will fake to the near side. Now looks for some running room. Breaks one tackle. There's a flag back in the middle part of the field. Big hit by one of the Lions defenders on the far side. Big number 74, Desmond Scott. You have to be hoping Cole's okay. Looks like he's up and walking all right, but that was a hard hit into the sideline. Here's the call. Oh, face mask, number 76, defense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, there's not a 76 on the roster. We'll assume that was maybe 74, Desmond Scott. But that's a big one right there to help the Venom get out of a hole as they will move the ball all the way into Lion territory at the 20-yard line. Certainly. You'll take what you can get at this point. The Venom need to score on this drive. Already down two touchdowns, and the Lions offense has shown no weaknesses so far. They're going to be clearly very tough to stop today. So the Venom need to make sure they put up some points here because it could be one of those classic shootout kind of games that you're going to have to be able to keep up with the pace of. Cole takes the low snap, throws to the near side, a little bit high, and off target again. Intended receiver on the near side is Zachary Atkinson for Amarillo. And that was just good coverage from the Lions. They had everything blanketed there. Two defenders in the area. A throw a little bit high and outside, but you're trying to avoid putting that in danger, trying to avoid throwing a pick there. The Lions, just a great job covering everything up there and putting the Amarillo venom still behind the eight ball here is second down and trying to get some quick completion here. Two receivers to the near side of the field. One will go in motion to the far side and join a teammate at the line of scrimmage. And they fake the handoff, maybe should have handed it off because the quarterback is dropped. And we do have an, a penalty marker as well. Officials gather near midfield to talk about that and sort it out. Well, give us the call. Looked like there was some pushing and shoving. I'm not sure if the flag related to that. Personal foul, number zero defense, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. We're going from the end. Well, a couple of plays in a row, and here's a look at that last play. And there you see the contact and the penalty. A little bit of jawing between these players, a lot of emotions flying high at this point, but another penalty for the Lions here. You can't have those at no. this point of the game if you're Columbus, knowing that you're in a great spot, you're up three scores, the Venom offense is struggling. You can't give away the yardage like that. You have to make the Venom earn it. Dropping back, and the throw over the middle, tipped and nearly intercepted before it got to the receiver. Getting a hand on that pass was Kai Griswold. And again, Coach Rick Krantz unhappy with the officials, thought there might have been some illegal contact along the way. Doesn't get the call. 
Coach Krantz right now talking to his quarterback, Dalton Cole, on the field. Right now, 11-minute mark of the second quarter. The Venom have yet to complete a pass in this game, which is just remarkable. But we talked about the things that are impacting this offense right now and trying to overcome it. I think the, the elements are there. They're just uh, – they have had deep shots that they can make. They've had these quick outs that they've been able to, to have open. They just need to find that switch and make things click and get this offense rolling. Nigel Seeley is in it running back to the right side of his quarterback. Cole takes the snap. He will go underneath to Seeley, who catches it and tries to spin out of a tackle around the 15-yard line. Can't quite do that. And then more extracurricular activity and penalty markers. Well, at this point, if I'm the Venom, I'm taking the yardage any way I can get it. And if this is another penalty against the Lions, which... Unsportsmanlike conduct, number zero defense, his first of the game. The penalties half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Second consecutive penalty called on Marte Deers, 6'4", 230-pound linebacker out of Faulkner University. And Columbus it, Lions, their first, it's 30 seconds. And the Lions taking a timeout here, smart. Talk to your defense right now because that's the third penalty on this drive for the Lions. And they have to understand we have all the momentum right now in this game. The Venom offense is struggling. You don't want to give them this free yardage and risk them punching in a touchdown here and all of a sudden getting that momentum back that they hadn't yeah. been able to find. Yeah, as you said, especially since they've dominated play to this point, they have to be feeling pretty good about themselves coming into a hostile environment here in Amarillo and rolling to a 21-8 lead after the first quarter of play. Some of the highlights for you. So that last drive, just a great pass again, great placement uh, from the Lions quarterback, Marcus Brooks, on that touchdown. And then on that one, it felt like maybe, again, just a little bit of a push-off in the end zone, but the Lions get away with it and end up scoring. And the difference right now we're seeing between the Lions offense and the Venom offense, very stark. But the Venom now a great opportunity, golden opportunity inside the 10 here, set up with a first and goal. From the 7, let's see if they can punch it in. Dows back in it, running back. Cole, under pressure, hit, keeps his feet, fights for yardage, and he'll go down short of the five-yard line around the seven. And, boy, here we've got big-time skirmish breaking out. Dalton Cole taking some exception to getting roughed up at the end of that play. The officials just have to do what they can to try to retake control of this game. Things getting a little bit heated at this moment. Of course, throughout this drive, we've seen it pop up. For whatever reason, there seems to be a lot of animosity on the field right now. So the officials need to try to do what they can to get things under control, settle everybody down, and try to get this game back on track. Well, and I've noticed there has been some, uh, a lot, in fact, of talking back and forth. And, you know, again, I'm sure Columbus came in with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder with, you know, all the talk about the new team of the league, the Amarillo Venom being so strong. Here's the, well, thought we were going to get the call, but now we get it. Through the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 74 defense, his first of the game. Also after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 56 offense. Those fouls cancel, it's second down. So Desmond Scott, the guilty party, for the Lions, Bryant Ankra, the center, the guilty party for the Venom, basically just defending his quarterback, I think, in his mind. But nonetheless, offsetting penalties. Second down and goal from the Venom from the seven-yard line. and shifting personnel around. Contact Dows to the left of the quarterback. Alton Cole sends men in motion. Wants to throw, now flushed out of the pocket, comes to the near sideline, and it is incomplete. Tried to dump it off at the last minute. And one thing we've noticed, KJ, is that the Lions are getting some pretty good pressure on Dalton Cole. And here's a flag. You see a conversation being had between Dalton Cole and his receiver. It looked like maybe open in the back of the end zone was For open. 52, blitz outside the left guard. 
half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Zachary Atkinson in for the Venom. And it looked like that was uh, Rodney Pierre in the back of the end zone, just having a conversation with his coach and his quarterback. It looked like maybe Dalton Cole had him there in the middle of the back of the end zone on the last and play. He was clearly frustrated after that one. And, and I think, actually, instead of number four, it was 14, Siobhan Richardson. He's the one doing push-ups out on the field that uh, missed the, uh, the catch there. Right, yes, that was the yeah. receiver that, that Cole was targeting, but I was saying that uh, Rodney Pierre looked like he was open in another part of the play and maybe a little frustrated that his quarterback couldn't find him. Cole, again, flush from the pocket, and in the back of the end zone, it is Pierre. a touchdown. How about that catch, Rodney Pierre? And again, as I mentioned, Rodney Pierre maybe a little frustrated on that last play, not getting yeah. the ball. Cole finds him this time. Looked like he was open in that same part of the field. It took just a half a beat for Cole to see him and throw it up for him. And what a crap. You know you're going to come down on the top of that wall, and somehow you've got to keep your focus on catching that ball and bringing it in. And Rodney Pierre did just that. And, you know, receivers in this game, Mike, they can always – Want those targets, you know, any receiver, you ask him how many targets, he wants all of them during oh, yeah. the course of a game. Pierre wanted that one last time, called for it, you know, and, and to his credit, Cole looks for him and he comes through for him. Thomas Kadera on to try the extra point kick. And that one is on the way and no good. Wide to the left side. So it remains 21 to 14 with 8.54 to play here in this second quarter. We've got a timeout on the field, and we will come right back to the Civic Center Coliseum after this break on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10. If you're trying to find ways to stay warm in your home this winter, you better call Scottco. Their team of highly skilled professionals will have your home's heating system operating in top condition or they can install a more energy efficient model, keeping you warm and saving you money. Don't let problems ruin the day-to-day -day comfort that you cherish in your home. Call Scott Co. today and find out why they have been trusted since 1972. Scott Co., your local independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. At SB Vision and Canyon, we're more than just eye care. We specialize in sports vision, enhancing the visual responses for athletes of all kinds. We can work with any athlete to help the eyes and brain process visual cues faster, enhancing the skills the athlete already has. Any age, any athlete, any sport can benefit from our services. Call to make an appointment today. SB Vision, eye care from home to field. My name is Grayson Kraft, and I own and operate Sand Hill Livestock here in Canadian, Texas. I'm a third generation cowman myself. I work out here on a daily basis with my son and my future son-in-law, and they're very instrumental and helpful to me. Sand Hill does some farming and background livestock for clientele. We weigh their cattle and then load them on a truck and ship them to a desired yard. Capital Farm Credit believes in the producer. They leave you alone and let you go do your job. Together, we're better. Big game here in the American Indoor Football as the defending champion Columbus Lions in town to take on the Amarillo Venom, the new kids on the block for AIF anyway. And a big score right there, KJ, as you talked about, almost a not, not, not a must-score situation, but not far from it. Certainly in terms of the first half, I mean, you're talking about the Lions have all the momentum and the, the Venom offense just needing something positive as we're going to take another look at. An incredible throw under pressure and it just really a was. great catch uh, from Pierre in the back of the end zone. So the Venom offense finally figuring something out. Now it's the defense's turn. They, they allowed three touchdown drives so far in this game. Obviously, it's a high-scoring game. You're going to give up a lot of points. But really, that fourth and one to start the game is the one I come back to. And a little bit of a, a question as to why they were playing that far off in coverage in that situation. Obviously not wanting to give up the touchdown, but a great move leads to the touchdown anyway. So the Venom offense, let's see if they can force some turnover, some sort of turnover on this drive, or at the very least make it tough on the Lions. 
Jamie Ewing chases that down inside the five-yard line, looking for running room, and he's got some. Look out. And tripped up by Thomas Cadera. Otherwise, that one was going the distance. What a tremendous touchdown saving tackle. The Venom tried a, a little bit of a squib kick there, and uh, it looked like it was going to work to perfection, but just look at this cut from the Lions here on this return. Just one cut, makes his move right up the field. Looked like he was going to be gone, but just a great touchdown saving tackle to prevent the Lions from taking that in. Even still, this offense being set up at the 16-yard line, not what you want if you're the Venom. Looks like the way that this offense has been playing, that's going to make things pretty easy on the Lions to punch in another score. Ewing may get some ribbing from his teammates because the kicker <laughs> was able to bring him down on that. He couldn't avoid him. But he does set up his team in great field position. Marcus Brooks will take the snap. Short drop back, throws into the end zone, and that one is incomplete. What oh, a nice hit in the back of the end zone on the defensive play by Siobhan Richardson to maybe jar that ball loose as Deloach was the intended receiver. Here's a good look at it. Those are the plays where you, just, you hope Deloach is okay because you see flips right over, over the on his stands. Head. Yeah. It looked like the, maybe some of the uh, the fans or the, the media <laughs> members, uh, you know, the Emerald Venom staff there, maybe been able to catch his fall a little bit. Helped a little bit there and it's for, to avoid a, a too bad of a, an, a fall. So second down and 10. All at the 16-yard line. Now the oh. quick pass picked off at the 12-yard line. And what a big defensive play by the Venom. That is... D. Reese coming up with that interception. And what a read from D. Reese to come over from that jackpack position to make that interception. So it looks like the officials are discussing something on the field. You hope that it still results in a Venom turnover. It looks like it will. But just look at this read from Reese. Instantly knows where the ball's being thrown, gets right in front to make that interception. What a play to make, especially considering the Lions offense has not been so much. And personal foul, number 31, passing team. 10-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, Amarillo Venom. Well, a huge momentum shift there and the penalty on top of it. But really, this, this Lions offense has not been fueled by these short completions. So you almost, it's a little bit of a risk there from D. Reese to try to jump that pass so quickly, but a tremendous read from him to get the interception. And that's exactly what the Venom needed. He looks like a really exciting player. You've got to be, if you're playing a position called Jack Black, Jack Back, right? You've got to be that kind of intense player. And D. Reese showed his skill right there. And the Venom go to work on offense. That pass is tipped away and incomplete. Dangerously into the air. Into some fans along the sideline. So second down and 10 now for the Venom. And just a smart play there from the defensive back, Kai Griswood, for the Lions, knowing when once that ball is tipped, it's fair game to put the hit on the receiver and make sure he can't come down with it. So tremendous play there to force the second down. Clock running with 6.20, as you see on your screen there, left to play in this second quarter. It's been a good first half. Venom struck quickly on the opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Lions put three scores on the board, and the Venom, Trying to bounce back now, scoring on their last possession and in business at the 20 on this possession. Cole, kind of a little screen pass on the far side. And again, Venom player taking exception. That's Douse from Ohio State. And it looked like Cole was just trying to get rid of it there. He might have had his receiver briefly, but just facing a lot of pressure. Quick dump off just to avoid the sack. And smart play there from Cole just to try to make sure he doesn't lose yardage there, but still tough spot, third and 10 now from the 20. We're really seeing this Lions defense, just the athleticism from this defense just flying around, making it incredibly yeah. difficult at every level right now for the Venom up front, a, the pass rush just unrelenting, and in the secondary, the defensive backs speed. flying all over the place. Yeah. One-handed on the catch from center, and Dalton Cole is going to run out of room and be dropped for a loss of about five yards back to midfield. 
And so the Venom, a very promising possession going south in a hurry. And Cole was facing Amarillo pressure. Amarillo Venom, their third. It's 30 seconds. And Cole was facing pressure there, so you obviously know that that was a, a, a tough completion to try to come up with no matter what. Uh, down the opposite sideline, he did have his receiver, Hassan Brockman, open, but when you're facing that kind of a pass rush, it's hard to make that throw, and uh, the Lions were coming with everything they had on that play. Yeah, DeAndre Brown was the first to apply the pressure and actually got a hold of Dalton Cole to bring him down. So a loss of five, bringing up fourth and 15 right at midfield. Just under five minutes left to go in this opening half. And if you're the, the Venom right now, it's, it's tough to try to figure out what to turn to. The pass rush has just been so good for the Lions that you don't have much time to create anything on offense. Here is Dalton Cole with some time this time, and he goes deep, and that one out of the back of the end zone and incomplete according to the Lions players. Intended receiver Hassan Brockman doing all he could do to try to bring that ball down, but just a little too far. And you saw it again, the Lions there bring four, bring the pressure, and the Venom keeps someone in to block to give Cole just a little bit of time, but even still, the, the Lions just knowing where to place their defenders, have double coverage back there, and make that an incredibly tough completion to try to make. You see Cole still facing pressure despite having the extra blockers, and the Lions, it's seems like they're playing with 11 players out there sometimes. It really does. They even had, as you said, two defenders back deep uh, covering on that pass play. So, again, the Venom not able to score and possibly draw even or take the lead. And now the opportunity swings back to the Columbus Lions. They have it at midfield. Marcus Brooks under center. And we'll go to work. He's under pressure, though. Flag on the play. And he goes down near the 15-yard line. Big number 91, Josh Jackson, dropping the quarterback for the Lions. It looked like Trayvon John lost his helmet there. I'm not sure if that's relating to the penalty. Maybe legal hands to the face, potentially, coming up for the Lions. Oh, yeah. I think it will be the penalty. As we saw in the replay, Romilio Kimbrough just took his helmet right off. How's on the play? Holding number 30 offense, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 30 offense. That penalty is also declined at second down. Well, rough play for Kimbrough because he got called twice for two different infractions. Yeah, and you see John there, it looked like he was going to get the sack, and uh, Kimbrough just doing everything he can to try to make sure that doesn't happen, uh, although... The penalty uh, resulted in not helping the cause very much. On second down, here's a pass over the middle. Wide open receiver has it at the 20-yard line and still going and finally out inside the 15-yard line goes Roman DeLoach. Found an opening right across the middle, KJ. And he's been the venom killer so far in this game for the Lions. Just... We mentioned just the, this athleticism at six foot five is so much to deal with, and just wide open across the middle on that play, and the Venom able to bring him down, but not before picking up a first down. You see how he fought for those extra five yards on that play to get the first. From the 14-yard line, first down and 10 for the Lions. Here's the give to Kimbrough, and he breaks one tackle near the line of scrimmage, is able to get to the edge and pick up some positive yardage. Not a lot, but some. And for this defense, you have to feel like they they have to be feeling some bit of confidence after that interception on the last drive and the pressure they were able to apply on first down here. But after coming up with that interception on the last drive, you, you hoped the offense would able to be able to take advantage. And they have to feel some sort of a little bit of a down the fact that they couldn't capitalize off of their interception. Got a little more than I thought. Six yards on the carry, second down and four. Here's the pass into the end zone. It's tipped, but right into the arms of the receiver for the Lions. D'Amico Ewing with the touchdown catch. 
And D. Reese was there again, almost came up with another interception. It would have been a crazy athletic play if he was able to get it, but just tips it and a great play from the Lions to still hang on to it. If he just was able to drop back a little bit further, maybe he could have got there. But the Lions put another touchdown up on the board here in this first half. By the way, uh, hats off to our crew back behind us. Great look there on the instant replay. Now the extra point kick from Ryson Richardson. Snap is bobbled, and it's tipped, and then it's off the upright. This is, well, maybe not returnable. Started to say that was returnable, but... So the extra point kick fails. Was there a penalty marker? Here's the call. Yes. Fouls on the play. Illegal defense, number 14, rush from the outside. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, number 14, defense. The try will be from half the distance to the goal. So. And a great play to block it from the Venom. It wasn't even part of their illegal defense. You didn't, maybe didn't even need that rusher coming no. from the outside. But unfortunately, that's going to result in the Lions getting another chance here. And will they bring out the offense now that it's a little bit closer? Sure looks like that's what they've got in mind. But there's some confusion, and so they're going to have to call a timeout. Timeout. Columbus Lions, their third and final. It's 30 seconds. Getting close to the one-minute timeout as well. The one-minute warning, I guess, is what they'll call it. But, man, good game. 27-14, Lions over the Venom. And Lions, again, not letting the interception come back to haunt them as they got it right back on a defensive stop. You know, in this indoor game, it doesn't take many defensive stops to make the difference. Certainly, and going to get another look at this interception from D. Reese. Again, he almost had a second one on that last drive, but that was the play that you hoped would really swing things in the Venom favor. Here's a second chance at it, just couldn't come up with it as the Lions come up with another touchdown from Ewing on that play. So holding up the number two actually after that one, his second touchdown of the day, trying to let everybody know how many he's going for. So it will be the offense on the field for the Lions. J.C. Newman is actually under center. Newman is going <laughs> to run right into the arms of the Amarillo Venom. Number 21 right there, Hassan Brockman, was not going to let him get loose. Or maybe that was DeMorgan Bro. Couldn't tell if it was 21 or 31. Let's get a look at it on the replay here. Yeah, it was... Did you say it was 21 or 31? I think I it was tell. 21. I think it, I think it was uh, Brockman there on the on the sack for the Venom. Or uh, actually, I think you're right. I think it was I think it was Bro there on the sack uh, for the extra point try. Yeah, <laughs> so we 31. Get the look yeah. at it. And I, I also want to give a shout out to Josh Jackson who came over, make sure his teammate doesn't get the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. There pulls him right away. Let's just take what we can get, not get another penalty on this try. We don't want to give them a third shot at it. Make sure we get off the field and celebrate the sack after the fact. All right, so Lions kickoff coming up. Still plenty of time left to go in this second quarter. And it would be big if the Benham could punch one in here before the end of the first half. Certainly, and you know, the Venom offense was able to find a little bit of a rhythm two drives ago thanks to some, some Lions penalties. And you just, you wonder what sort of adjustments that Coach Krantz is gonna have in store for his team and how they'll, they'll change things potentially here. But again, if I'm the Lions, not giving them a chance to return it, I'm gonna make the offense earn it throughout the course of this game. Richardson, the deepest back, Pierre in front of him. And that one's going to bounce around. Richardson gives chase and has it now as he comes out looking for running room. Doesn't find just a whole lot as he's dropped just right around the 10-yard line as Benjamin uh, Smiley comes up to take him off his feet. And, Mike, one of the other parts of getting an Uno potentially could have come into play there is there's also the element of the rule that if you're tackled in the end zone, 
the Uno comes into play as well, but the Venom do a nice job getting it out there, but have to start a little bit behind the eight ball here at the 11-yard line. So we'll see how that impacts the offense here. Almost feel like with the speed they have, maybe it'll open some things up for a deep shot, which it feels like that's what Dalton Cole and this offense really want to get into. Well, they may have to do it from five yards further back. Why not? Institution offense, breaking the huddle with more than eight players. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. And just another self-inflicted wound there from the Venom offense to back themselves up. But you know, if you're at the nine-yard line, might as well be at the four. Maybe they just want to give their receivers a little bit extra, extra room to run out there. And we'll see if that's something they try to open up here. It feels like with the amount of time left, you see the clock running. Now about to go under a minute, stopping right at one minute, minute warning. So we do get the one minute warning. When we come back, it'll be first and 15. Lions leading the Venom 27 to 14. We're back right after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 too. Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center is where futures are discovered, shaped and achieved, both for individuals and for communities. This is where curiosity inspires greatness and breakthroughs save lives. What we explore here means tomorrow will be different because the best way to predict the future is to create it. And we are the future of health. You know, after more than 30 years of saying your buns are up, Buns Over Texas continues to be the destination for the build your own burger. Great A beef from the flat top, toasted buns, all the fixings at your fingertips. You make your Buns Over Texas burger exactly like you like it. Buns Over Texas is the famed birthplace for Texas tea, nine flavors on tap. Burgers, tea, and bluebell shakes, they're all going to bring a smile to your face. Buns Over Texas, 34th and Bell, Amarillo. Glad you've joined us here on this Sunday night for American Indoor Football from Amarillo. And you see the last touchdown by the Lions that have given them a 27 to 14 lead. Running through that block that was called back due to penalty as well. The Venom offense now setting up. Chance to take advantage here towards the end of the half. Pass comes to the near sideline. Not much there for Richardson. Oh, and that's a little too much aggressiveness. You got to stop at the whistle, Mike. You got to stop at the whistle. These, these Lions players are playing with a lot of aggression right now, a lot of aggressiveness. But forward progress was stopped. The whistle was blown, and they go a little bit extra, and that's going to take away the penalty yardage that they just benefited from. A personal foul, number one, defense. The foul occurred with the running clock under a minute. The game clock will start on the snap. So the stick's being moved way up towards the 21-yard line, and that's going to help the Venom a little bit. Again, they benefited a lot from these, uh, these defensive penalties against really the have. Lions. On their last scoring drive for sure, and another mental mistake. Cole scrambles up the middle. Now tries to get to the outside and there. You see the speed just closing things down. Did he lose the football? Yes, he did. He did. And it will go over to the Columbus Lions. What could be a costly turnover, a penalty marker down near the five-yard line. We'll see what this is. It looks like this is a after the play, uh, so it should still be Lions ball, but Cole just facing again this incredible pressure from the Lions defense and looked like the hands got up towards the face. Fumble recovered by the defense after the play delay a game number zero the recovering team for throwing the ball in the stands 10 yard penalty first down Columbus Lions. Now my question Mike there is that that was number zero already has one unsportsmanlike penalty is throwing the ball in the stands not classified as an unsportsmanlike penalty? Yeah good good question. But you see there, the hands kind of look like they get up towards the face just a little bit. No call from the officials, and the ball comes out. Cole, again, has done a nice job so far trying to evade the pressure as much as he's been able to, but they are just unable to escape the Lions' pass rush. And, you know, at this point of the game, the Phantom right now 
have more offensive yardage via penalty than they do yardage gained, and that's something that they're going to have to talk about yeah. in the locker room coming out of the second half. Definitely a concern. From the 24-yard line of the Lions on first down, pass to a wide-open receiver near the 15-yard line, and dancing into the end zone for the score is Ewing, which will be his third of the first half. And the venom there just get completely spun around. A great play from Ewing as he celebrates after the fact. And really just a poor coverage wide open. Ewing was no one within 10 yards of him. And then look at the defender just completely lost for the venom and shaking his head a little bit. He knows that one's going to, going to hurt to watch back after this game is over. You never want to get spun around as a defender. But a great play from Ewing, who's been huge in this first half for the Lions. One of the players the Venom are, are missing because of injury is defensive back Chris Jones. And so they could definitely use him tonight because they have had trouble covering these receivers from Columbus. High snap, but they get it down, and the place kick by Richardson is good. With 37.5 seconds left to go in the first half, it's the Lions 34 and the Venom 14 get an opportunity again to talk about some of the rules, uh, KJ, that we haven't talked about so far. Uh, we mentioned uh, the scoring and how that kind of shakes out. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, as well about the uh, time uh, and uh, what, you know, how that's structured in AIF. You see the field dimensions, uh, the dasher boards mark out of bounds on all sides. Uh, the top of the dasher boards is out of bounds. Uh, so those are some of the things to keep in mind. And, again, any loose ball which hits off the top, uh, except as we uh, saw earlier on that uh, touchdown pass, uh, is in play and a live ball. Right, and, so. and we saw that on the kickoff, too, when it, yes. it, it did hit off the barrier. That's still a live ball. That's in play. The Venom have to field that. And if they don't, then the Lions have a chance to recover. We'll see if they go with the same type of kick here they did last time. Pierre and Richardson back deep. It'll go to Richardson, one yard deep into the end zone. He's got room as he comes to the near sideline and taking off his feet right at midfield. And, well, we have another yellow hanky on the field. And it looks like this is likely going to involve kind of a skirmish we saw around the 20 there between these, these three teams. I'm not sure if it's in the area of, of holding. The Venom were pointing at the Lions players, so... Well, and the Lions players were pointing toward the Venom, so. Looks like maybe in the range of unsportsmanlike. Holding, number five, receiving team. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Amarillo Venom. So D. Reese getting the uh, call against him for holding. Well, 30 seconds left in the half, just about. The Venom really need a score here, down 20. If they can get something positive going into the locker room, it would certainly help out. Of course, the Lions deferring, so they're going to get the ball coming out of half two, and the last thing you want is the Lions with the ball, a chance to go up four scores. So as difficult a task as it may be, the Venom really need a score here with limited time remaining. This goes back to that last possession and that turnover that proved to be so costly instead of the Venom taking it down and scoring to end the half. It was the Lions tacking on another one. Flag on the play as the snap rolls to Cole. Then he almost completes the pass down the field. But again, penalty marker back towards the line of scrimmage. Again, a couple of fortunate hops tonight for the Venom off the turf. That being one of them. Defense, neither linebacker declared. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. And really a missed golden opportunity. You mentioned Cole was under pressure, but Javon Richardson was wide open down the field. And if he could just have taken a little bit off of that one, just even just thrown it up, Richardson could have waited there and, and grabbed it. But that one goes out of bounds. And now the Venom benefit a little bit from the penalty, but it would have been a lot nicer to have the ball inside of the 10-yard line, potentially already have that score on the board. Still 23 seconds to work with, first and 10 from the 19-yard line. 
They'll snap it to an up back. In there was Trayvon John. And the Venom are going to have to spend a time out here because that didn't work at all. It didn't seem like that was the idea the Venom had on that play. It seemed like some frustration from, from Cole and from his coach, too. It seemed like that's not exactly the play they had drawn up for that one. But the Venom still have some time here. Second down, 15 seconds remaining. Maybe time for one, two more plays if things go correctly. And the Venom, just they're going to need to take advantage of a deep shot. The Lions here, they have to be playing back defensively. They have to know the Venom are looking for it all here. I would have more defensive backs maybe playing further back in this one. Once again, they snap it to the up back, which is Trayvon John. Second straight first time. Half. That one works a little bit better. Go. But that's going to do it for the first half. Just didn't have enough time to get the ball down the field. And, well, it uh, was a good, exciting first half. Didn't end on a real positive note for the Venom, however. For whatever reason, they just seemed content there to go into the locker room. Didn't seem like they wanted to put the ball in harm's way after what happened on the last drive. And you said it, Mike, that fumble from Dalton Cole there with just under a minute to go in the first half is really going to be one of the plays we maybe look back on in this game and say that was one of the key things that swung things in the Lions' favor. 